So the first time I saw this, because I'm a space nerd, I happened to know a few of those places. I'm like, oh my gosh, I know what's going on there, that's so cool. <laughs> but the ma vast majority of it, I was like, what the heck is going on? This is so confusing. The guy that made it, Eric Bernquist, also published all the work that he put into it. He, all of the science that goes into each of those clips. And when you actually understand what is happening in each of those clips, Oh my god, it gets, it gets like a hundred times better. That is what we are going to be doing in this unit. Today, we're going to start out by, if we're going to be traveling around the solar system, we're going to need a spaceship, right? But if we're going out to these outer planets, um, like getting to Saturn and um, Uranus and all of those places, those trips are going to be like decades long. You're, some people might be spending their entire lives on spaceship. And the problem is, when you're out in space and weightless, like the people up on the International Space Station right now, most astronauts that go to the space station stay there for six months. And after spending six months in weightlessness, your muscles start to atrophy because you don't have to do work to like stand up or walk around or do anything. Your bones start to break down. Like when people get back from the space station, it usually takes them a couple of days before they can walk properly. And like Scott Kelly, who we were talking about yesterday, he's going to be up there for a year. Like when he gets back, he's going to be in rough shape. So if you're going to be out there for years and years, decades or lifetimes, the main important feature that our spaceship needs to have is artificial gravity. Now, there's all of these sci-fi movies and shows and stuff like Star Trek and Star Wars, and they're walking around their spaceships like there's gravity there. And most of them if they even address it at all, are saying that they have some sort of like gravity drive or something, which basically they're saying they have a switch that they can flip to turn gravity on and off. And that's kind of bull. Um, <laughs> some of them that like address it at all might say, oh, well, this is set like a thousand years in the future, and maybe at that point we'll have that kind of technology. I guess it's not technically impossible that some technological leap a thousand years from now might potentially make it possible, but based on the science that we understand right now, that is an impossibility. That we don't think you'll ever be able to create a gravity drive and turn gravity on and off like that. But there is still one system based on science that we do know and understand and can use that can simulate artificial gravity. Spaceship from Interstellar is one of them, right? That's pretty legit. Um, but what is the artificial gravity? How does it produce this much of gravity? It's not magnetic force. force. There you go. What was it? Centrifugal force. Centrifugal force. Centrifugal force. You spin the spaceship, or at least a component of the spaceship. Let's real quick go back to the very first scene here and look at the spaceship as it's flying away from Earth. And you'll see that it has these two spinning components. One of them is spinning one way, and the other one is spinning the other way. So that's going to produce artificial gravity in the spaceship. Because, like, if you get something spinning, and then you grab onto it as it's spinning, and start spinning along with it, centrifugal force is going to throw you to the outside. And it's you'll basically be stuck to the inside of this thing, and you can walk around the inside of the spaceship as if there was gravity there. But there's a problem. When I was a kid, I remember learning about centrifugal force. Like, I remember seeing a demonstration, and this guy filled a bucket full of water, and he swung it over his head. And he was like, the water doesn't fall out of the bucket when it's upside down because of centrifugal force. It's the same thing as if, like, you're on a roller coaster, and you go through a loop to loop. You don't fall out because of centrifugal force. And I was like, oh, cool, centrifugal force is an awesome thing. And then I got to high school, and they told me that it was a myth. And I was like, what? But I saw it. <laughs> yeah, but I saw it, right? So this seems confusing, but let me explain. So, hopefully you guys can now see that if you are the object that is rotating, centrifugal force exists, and we can use that as artificial gravity in our spaceship, right? But it might be kind of hard to get yourself into that reference frame. If you're in that spaceship, you might still be thinking, no, I'm really floating in space and spinning. It's hard to imagine yourself not moving. It might be a little bit easier to picture yourself as not moving if, rather than what you typically think of as a spaceship, it was more like an environment. Some of you guys have seen Interstellar, right? Do you guys remember that space station? Watch what happens. It really scared me. Do you 
see that? Watch with the baseball. It falls into a house that's hanging upside down. What is going on there? They're in a gigantic space station. And the entire space station is spinning. It, it's a little bit easier to put yourself in this frame of reference if rather than a regular spaceship, you were in a space station, right? And it's like an entire environment. It's like you're in a neighborhood. But it's curved. It's circular and enclosed, and the entire thing is spinning, but it doesn't feel like you're spinning. It just feels like you're standing still on a baseball field. Have you guys played Halo at all? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. One of the no, questions from your assignment that. today, we'll get to this in a moment, is about Halo. Basically, oh, it's this huge ring that is spinning, and it's huge. 500 kilometers in diameter. Yeah. Let's take one more step. Do you guys remember that scene that I pointed out in The Wanderers? Yeah. Right here. What's going on in this scene? Do you guys see these spaceships here that are all lined up. Yeah. It looks like they're all coming to you. This is a giant asteroid, is what this is. And there's something on the asteroid here. It looks like they just built a colony on the asteroid, right? Yeah. Okay, well that's a cool concept, but we'll get to that in a second. What is going on in the next scene? exact same asteroid from the last scene, you're looking at the inside of it. They hollowed out this asteroid and pressurized it, and it's so big that it like ends up having its own weather. These are clouds. They fill, They put a bunch of water in here, and it forms seas. Just think about some of the consequences of this type of thing, though. Like, imagine, back to the interstellar one for a second. That interstellar thing it was probably a couple hundred meters in diameter. It doesn't have to spin that fast if it's that big. So, theoretically, could you get on like a motorcycle, for example, and start riding your bike around that curve in the opposite direction that it's spinning? And if you get up to the speed that it's spinning at, like jump back thing. out, yeah, yeah. Tank, real quick, jump back out, out of that reference frame, into the reference frame where you're just sitting there in space, you would just be sitting there in space and the thing would be turning around you, but then jump back into that reference frame and it feels like you're flying, like literally, if you let go of the motorcycle, you'd just be floating there but it would feel like you're flying around the inside of your little space oh, machine. Wait, Stop. inside there? Stop. Yeah, you can do it here too. All right, one last leap. Forbidden's remote. I love to sail. Forbidden. What is going on here? It's like a colony, right? But yeah. what is it on? This is Saturn. This is oh. on one of Saturn's moons. So rather than artificial gravity, what if you just used, like we're already using a giant asteroid and we're happy with that, why can't we just use a moon that has legitimate gravity of its own? Could that be considered a spaceship or a space station? Like, yeah. what's your definition of a spaceship? Like, if you want to get from this side of Saturn over to the opposite side of Saturn, just jump on the moon and let the moon bring you around. So, could this moon be considered a spaceship? Sure. Yeah. Okay. In that case, one last thing. If this is the sun, you got Mercury's orbit here, and then Venus and Earth is right here, and Mars is right here. The current positions of Earth and Mars today, as we speak, Earth is like here, and Mars is like here. If we were to try and launch a rocket today to get from Earth to Mars, that trip would take something around two years. So, what if there happened to be a rock that we could hitch a ride on? It's not going to get all that close to Mars's orbit, but can cut that trip down from two years to about seven months. Would you consider that rock to be a spaceship? Yes. yes. That rock is Earth. What? So What's going to happen is our orbit is faster than Mars's orbit. And so like in a year, a year and a half, we'll be like right here, and Mars will be right here. And that is a seven-month journey. We're currently on a 4.5 billion year old spaceship. A self-sufficient, organic, complex spaceship. You're orbiting a power source that is a million times larger than your ship. There are 200 billion more sources, possibly, with ships like yours in your group. There are 40 more groups in your particular neighborhood. Your neighborhood is moving at 2 million miles per hour, an object that is 150 million light years away. Welcome to life. It's more exciting than you think on a bigger scale. My point is, I choose the frame of reference. It's more of a mindset, but you guys understand.
I choose the frame of reference where Earth is a spaceship. I love the idea that we are currently on a spaceship, flying around in space, and this spaceship is going to get us pretty close, a lot closer to Mars than we currently are. 